On any given hike through a forest, there's a lot of life you don't see. In fact, most of the creatures living in these woods are rarely seen. But this isn't because they're rare. Larger animals hear or smell us coming and keep their distance. But most animals take a different approach. As a rule, tiny creatures vastly outnumber the bigger ones. And despite their more limited sensory capabilities and less mobility, they manage to remain better hidden and more unknown to us than most. But if you know where and how to look, you can find remarkable creatures hidden just underfoot. This little critter here is called a redback salamander. And it's called a redback salamander because it has that kind of broad reddish stripe down its back. But the stripe can also be brown, it can be yellow, kind of golden color, or it can completely lack the stripe. And when that's the case, we usually call them leadbacks, uh, sort of lead for that silvery color that they have. Now, even though it's called a redback salamander, the red isn't particularly vibrant. And to some people, this may be kind of an unremarkable looking animal. But uh, I can tell you that there's much more than meets the eye to this little critter. There are two really incredible things about these small salamanders. The first becomes apparent if you spend even a little time searching for them when they're most active during the spring and the fall. These salamanders are numerous. In fact, where they occur, these red-backed salamanders are the most abundant vertebrates. Estimates for just how numerous red-backed salamanders are are really tough to get because they spend so much of their life underground. Even during the spring and fall, the salamanders you can find under rocks and logs are just a fraction of the total population, just the tip of the iceberg. Estimates vary from place to place and study to study, but there can be thousands of these little salamanders living in a single acre of forest. That means that every couple of steps you take, you're probably passing over at least one or two of these salamanders. Not only do these numbers indicate that these salamanders outnumber collectively all of the birds and mammals in a given forest, but that in some cases they can even outweigh them. There is more biomass of these small salamanders than of any other group of vertebrate animals in these forests. This abundance means that redback salamanders are a major food source for larger animals and that they're important predators on smaller invertebrates. Some scientists even suspect that redback salamanders might be numerous enough to affect the rate at which leaf litter decomposes on the forest floor. Maybe even more interesting is a strange trait shared by redback salamanders and their relatives. So redback salamanders are part of a larger group, a larger family of salamanders, Plethodontidae. And the Plethodontids, or lungless salamanders, true to their name, have no lungs. They're entirely lungless. They breathe through their skin. We call that cutaneous respiration. And though many amphibians are capable of exchanging some oxygen through their thin, permeable skin, it's kind of a unique trait to this family that they completely breathe through their skin. That's they have no lungs. They're entirely reliant on their skin. Now, this is only possible, this unique physiological trick is only possible because of their small size. Interestingly, smaller creatures or objects have greater surface area to volume ratios than bigger ones. Take for instance a cube with a volume of one and six surfaces exposed, meaning it has a six to one surface area to volume ratio. A Rubik's cube has 27 of these cubes, giving it a volume of 27, but with only 54 of those surfaces exposed, meaning its surface area to volume ratio is only two to one. This means that the surface area of redback salamander skin is sufficiently extensive enough to pull in all the oxygen they need to survive. These little salamanders have been surviving here long before people ever got here, and that long history of survival, coupled with their incredible abundance, might lead you to believe that they're just really tough animals that can survive about anything. But the truth of the matter is I have to be really careful when handling this little salamander. I keep my hands moist, I make sure I don't have any disinfectant or any kind of chemical uh, bug spray or anything like that on my hands because they can take everything in right through their skin. That same thin skin that gives them those amazing respiratory powers makes them incredibly susceptible to pollutants and minor changes in their local environment. 
And like all wildlife, they're also susceptible to habitat loss. And the deforestation that's happened in eastern North America over the last few hundred years undoubtedly decimated populations. But fortunately, better management of our forest resources has led to dramatic reforestation in many states across eastern North America. These little salamanders are able to hang on in even relatively small patches of forest, so there's a lot you can do to help. If you own property with even small amounts of forest on it, take care to preserve whatever you can. And if you don't, if you live in the city or in an apartment, appreciate your local parks and preserves and be an advocate for them. These places are often the last refuge for small but incredible creatures like the red-backed salamander. <laughs>